Welcome to the Healthy Habit Hot Seat, where we chat to extraordinary humans and world-leading health experts to dive deep into the intricacies of the daily habits that have shaped their success. Remember, success leaves clues, right? I'm your host and resident healthy habit coach, Loz Antonenko, and I cannot wait to help you re-energize your life so you too can create opportunity, vitality, and abundance to become the master of your own incredible healthy destiny. Now, let's get into today's conversation. Adam Hudson, absolute pleasure to have you here on the Healthy Habit Hot Seat, joining me for some easy questions with some hard answers. How are you feeling today? I'm good to go. I've been uh, ready, ready to go for 2021. I'm excited. Rock and roll, mate. So imagine we're waiting in line at your favorite coffee shop and we've only got 30 seconds before uh, our decaf coffees are ready for takeaway. If you only had 30 seconds to explain to our listeners who it was that you were and what it was that you stood for, what would that be? I am and what I stand for. Wow, okay, as opposed to what I do. Um, uh, I guess I'm an entrepreneur. I love teaching Um, I love big ideas and I love being around people who are interested in big ideas. And I guess that would describe me pretty well. Mate, you know, that's succinct, short and sweet. Love it. And um, we're going to go and sip on those decaf coffees now. Now you were a delivery driver for Domino's Pizza and uh, you used to drive around Brisbane selling vacuum cleaners door to door whilst listening to Tony Robbins tapes. Now, what else was going on for you during that time in your life um, that gave you the direction to become the person that you are today? Yeah, so um, I actually was selling Kirby vacuum cleaners door to door. Um, I I grew up in a church, so I was very religious growing up in a Pentecostal kind of environment. Um, And there was only really one guy in the church that had any money. And I didn't know anybody who had any money because I came from a very working class family Everybody knew he had money because he had a Porsche and he got a brand new Lexus when it came out. And so I became curious about what does this guy do, you know, and, and this is in Brisbane. We used to go to church at Camp Hill. Turns out he owned about 10 one-hour photo shops. And um, so that was the first person I'd ever met that was sort of had any money. And I tried to get to know him. It was a bit hard at first. Um, but somebody um, at that time saw that I was interested and referred to me to an Amway distributor and said, you might be interested in what they're doing. So I joined up with Amway and I was so excited about this, what I thought was a business, which I guess it is a multi-level marketing thing. But what was great about it was that it got me into personal development. They gave me a book by David or Douglas Schwartz called The Magic of Thinking Big. And that was the first book I'd ever read that really lit me up. And I was like, oh my goodness, like nobody had ever told me that I had any kind of ability to shape my own destiny to set a goal and that if you set a goal the mind will work towards achieving a goal that was just foreign language to me at that time that whole idea of creating oneself was just so profound and so that led me I guess to sales and to environments where you get rewarded for effort um, kind of naturally so started in sales and then ended up my first business and uh, that, that was successful at 21 or 22 Um, and I've never had a job since then. It's fascinating that you've said that. A lot of uh, entrepreneurs that I've spoken to um, started in network marketing and said uh, something along the same lines, Adam, and it was that it taught them about the power of self-development, the power Mm. of structure and the power of process. Thanks for sharing. Um, Now, in 2011, you were producing projects uh, from your animation studio in LA, and then you sold that in 2015, yeah? Yeah, I had an animation studio, yep. Yeah, right. So in 2018, you produced a documentary on Larry King, uh, which you described as a massive highlight in your life. And then in 2019, so only a couple of years ago, you shared the stage with Sir Richard Branson. I actually was at that event too. Now, what has been a recent professional or personal highlight for you over the past 12 months? Now, we've just lived through let's use the word of the moment unprecedented times, and we've still got a lot of that ahead. But Last year has um, brought a lot of challenges for a lot of us. So I'd love to know what that was for you. Uh, Yeah, look, I think um, still to this day, what gives me the biggest kick is seeing our students. One of my businesses is education. Seeing my students use what we've taught them to change their lives. 
And sometimes they use the information, like they might buy my Amazon course and they'll use it and grow an Amazon business. But quite often I'll get a message from somebody from some far flung corner of the world that says, hey, listen, I just wanted to reach out and say thanks um, for what I learned from you. I didn't build an Amazon business, but I'm now doing something else. Just last week, somebody connected with me off Instagram and said, I've started a cleaning business in Byron. Right. Now booming. And for the first time in my life, I have a full-time business. I've been able to quit my job. And it was all because of what I learned about branding and packaging, and marketing, and how to think about business and entrepreneurship that I learned in your Amazon course. So um, the highlights are always the results that the students get. Um, and uh, fortunately, we've had a lot of that in our business. So there's all the celebrity stuff, like meeting Larry King and Grant Cardone and Gary Vee and Tony Robbins and all this, and they haven't done those tours. And they're great. And they're sort of like a moment of just reality check of like, oh my God, I'm speaking and over there backstage is Tony Robbins jumping up and down on his trampoline and I'm going on before him and he's come over and said good day and shake your hand or whatever. But those things are just sort of little mile markers. They're not the real meat and potatoes. So you're really about the, uh, I guess, the the coal face moments, you know, seeing people there on the ground actually achieving the things that you have achieved in your own life, Yeah. Yeah, it's seeing the lights come on for them in the same way they came on for me when I was younger and learning this stuff. Um, and mentoring, I don't do much of it, but, I, you know, I'm mentoring a young fellow at the moment from the Sunshine Coast to uh, 18 years old and he's starting his first information business. So I'm mentoring him and how to put it all together and just seeing him come alive and his brain is now engaged in something that's exciting to him and seeing him develop his first logo and spending all night planning out his affiliate program. And I, I get a real kick out of seeing that. So it is, it is really rewarding being a teacher. And they're the traits of a, a great coach because great coaches learn equally from their students. It's a very reciprocated relationship. Now, yeah. your, your work has taken you all around the world and you sort of touched on some of those uh, things that have happened for you, those little milestones, and you've helped thousands of people excel in their own business. And you've stood side by side, as you mentioned, with some of the world's most amazing and prominent personalities, including our own former Australian Prime Minister, the Honourable John Howard. I'd love to know who are the types of people that you surround yourself with in your support network and closest circle of influence. So it doesn't have to be by name, but what type of people do you surround yourself with, Adam? Uh, it's not as glamorous as you would imagine. Um, <laughs> I have a wide range. Of, um, most of my close friends today I've had for 20 years um, or 15, 20 years, people certainly that are in my inner circle of business. And then I have, you know, your, your likable rogues and piss heads and all the normal types of people that you collect through life. And you've got to have all of those people in your life. So I, I have a couple of people that are friends, I suppose, that you might say are well-known or famous, but mostly um, it's just ordinary people. And, and, um, and you just sort of gravitate over time to uh, those who are um, sort of got similar values to you in, in uh, one way or the other. So the types of friends that you surround yourself with, what kind of traits do those people have? Are you the average of the five people that you hang around the most in the words of Jim Rohn? Yeah, I would, I would say that's probably true, you know, um, uh, in a lot of ways. They're, um, they're, they, they, they at least were ambitious. Now, I'm turning 47 soon, so I'm not as ambitious as I was when I was 27 um, because, you know, you've got a bit more money now and you've achieved a bit more. Um, and I'm not sort of one of those guys that is going to, you know, push and push and push and push until I die. You know, I've, I've got different things I want to explore in life. So I would say so. I, I mostly have, when it comes to business, quite uh, friends as, as related to business. A lot of them are successful in business. Um, pretty much all of them are entrepreneurs. Not many of my closest friends are employees. Nearly all of them are not entrepreneurs uh, or have been. Um and they all have a general interest in investing. Um, yeah, you just you just don't vibe with people that don't have shared yeah. values. So, um, yeah, they are in a lot of ways. And your vibe attracts your tribe. I mean, I didn't make that one up. I stole that one from someone. But it's true. I mean, the the more you level up, the more the people around you level up. And, you know, on, on that topic, you are one of those people that gives to the less fortunate and it's 
one of your life's missions to impact many lives through your social causes, in particular, giving the gift of sight and helping the blind see again. And I can only imagine how gratifying and fulfilling that must be. How else do you maintain soulful alignment? Uh, I think staying, it's, it's really simple. Like I, I live at, uh, on the beach and every day when I get up, I look out the front, I look at my uh, partner when I wake up and I see she's in bed with me and I'm like, well, I've already won there because I've got a great relationship. Um, I, I look past her out to the ocean and I'm like, how lucky am I? So I think staying grounded and grateful really um, tends to eliminate those who are less um, fortunate in many, many ways. I, I am um, not one of these people that believes that um, luck doesn't play a part. I, th I think I was insanely lucky to be born in Australia. Uh, I think I was insanely lucky to be born in Australia when I was born in Australia. Um, so uh, I, I, those things are never lost on me. I'm insanely lucky that I'm healthy. I don't have any mental um, disabilities, physical disabilities. I've had some struggles with mental health, but apart from that, I haven't really been touched by um, life and that side of things that so many people suffer from out there. So I think if you've got that constant gratitude and perspective, um, it makes, uh, as I said, it illuminates those less fortunate. And if you're an asshole, you just ignore those who are less fortunate, but most people are not assholes. Most people, if they had the resources and, um, and, uh, and, and the will, they would do good things as well. Um, so yeah, just, just staying grounded. And, and I learned the real, the highlights in my last five years of some of the best moments have been through the giving, um, particularly the on the ground giving. So for those watching, um, Loz mentioned that we do uh, charity work on eyesight. So I met the founder of a charity called the um, John Fawcett Foundation in Indonesia, just before he passed away as it happens, only a few weeks before. Um, wow. and, yeah, and John said to me, you know, uh, told me his life story and he's an Australian guy from Perth and how he set up this foundation in Indonesia, spent the second half of his life, basically like a Fred Hollows um, providing eye surgery to people who couldn't afford it. So we, um, we started um, taking students there um, on tours and we said, if you make a $1,000 donation to their charity, uh, we'll pay for your bus, accommodation, and we'll send, either I'll go or one of our team will go and, and give you a guide and tour to an actual um, eye surgery centre and uh, the villages will come and you watch the surgeries happen and you watch- What an amazing experience. Wow. Yeah, it really is. And, and in the end, we, we ended up buying a mobile hospital for them. So, you know, uh, that was an amazing thing to be able to do, you know, and um, yeah, our students, we had a big three-day event. Our students, were, we needed a quarter of a million dollars the audience donated one hundred and seventy thousand dollars in three days, and Joe and I put in the other eighty grand or whatever was bought, um, and then we bought this mobile eye clinic. So at the end of every year now, we go to bed going, "Well, we made X amount of money, but um, our giving has freed thousands of people from blindness forever." And so that's pretty cool, and it will in perpetuity. So that's mm. good. We've done thirteen thousand interest-free loans to people in third world countries through Kiva. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the loan book now that's interest free and out there in the market when it comes back we lend it again so it's pretty cool dude that's a great legacy you know it's it, there's no doubt you've created an extraordinary life from your humble beginnings are you from logan <laughs> yeah brown's plains yeah. from brown's plains yeah to you know the, the person that you are today and i know it's a big question but just to wrap up uh, what are your top three tips to living a fulfilling and purposeful life well, number one is gratitude because if you if you wake up and you count your blessings, a simple thing and it costs nothing, uh, you will find gratitude very, you'll find happiness very quickly. I always say happiness is hiding on the other side of gratitude um, and it's just so easy to find. Um, that, and that, that's a lot of it. And, and I think um, the other is just being very vigilant at the gate of your own mind um, in, in modern life, we are under assault constantly being told how we should feel, what we should be, what's going on in the world, instead of saying, you know what, Donald Trump's doing what he's doing and, um, you know, uh, the coronavirus is doing what it's doing. And But how we feel about all of that and the amount of 
freight or space we allow that to have in our life is our decision. Um, and so be really vigilant about protecting your energy um, because it comes in through your ears, in through your eyes. And so be, be, be cognizant of that and, and um, really, um, yeah, take it seriously. So that's two tips. <laughs> you have another one? That is two. I mean, another one, stay healthy, you know, like look after yourself. I, I guess have one thing I see in a lot of people is they just don't have standards for anything. They don't have a standard for their relationship. They don't have a standard for what they put in their mouth. They don't have a standard for what they will accept. They just take what's given to them. And um, I think if you have very clearly defined standards, then your life just works out better. And the first person, I'm good at, people are always good at saying, this is what I want in someone else or what I want out of you. But you've got to apply those standards to yourself as well. So start out with the dream girl or the dream job or the dream whatever it is you want, dream home. And then ask yourself, well, what standard a person is going to get that girl, that home, that income, and um, but have standards. Don't let life just happen. It's such an amazing gift. Um, don't don't let it just happen to you. You know, um, create it. Be a co-creator with it. Man, those are golden nuggets right there. And guys. That's it for today's conversation with Adam Hudson. Adam, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you and I'm really looking forward to having another chat where we're going to dive deep into the daily intricacies of your life to see what makes you tick and to see what habits you have. So thank you once again and chat soon. No worries. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us this week on the Healthy Habit Hot Seat. Make sure to visit loslife.com where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Google Podcasts and Spotify so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, I'd be stoked with a five-star rating on iTunes. Better still, tell a friend and share the love. If you loved this episode, you might want to check out my book, The Healthy Habit Handbook, available in soft cover, ebook, and audio form on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Balboa Press, and all good bookstores. Be sure to tune in for our next episode for your fortnightly dose of inspiration from some of the world's most successful and healthy lifestyle masters. Remember, stay inspired. I'm Loz Antonenko, and ciao for now.